Hi, in this video we will look at how a mass spectrometer works and in particular how the ionisation, acceleration, deflection and detection steps take place inside a mass spectrometer. If you're looking for information on a time of flight mass spectrometer then please check out the separate video. The links are in the description below. A mass spectrometer at its simplest can be used to measure the relative atomic and molecular masses of substances. But a mass spectrometer is such a versatile analytical tool that it may be used in many scientific fields. For example, the mass spectrometer can be used to determine the molecular weight and structure of unknown, unknown compounds and so aid in their identification. It can also be used to quantify the amount of specific compounds present in a sample. This is crucial in fields such as environmental analysis, where it can be used to measure the level of pollutants in an ecosystem. The mass spectrometer is also commonly used in forensic science to aid in identifying illicit drugs, detecting explosives and determining the composition of unknown substances found at the scene of a crime. As a final example, the mass spectrometer can also be used in food safety and quality control to detect contaminants which may be present and to analyse the composition of foodstuffs. The diagram shown outlines the main working parts of a typical mass spectrometer. The main parts you need to be aware of are, firstly, the sample port. Now this is where the substance to be analysed is placed inside the mass spectrometer. The sample to be analysed, for example, could be placed on a heated probe and inserted directly into the spectrometer. The heat from this probe will also vaporise the sample under analysis. Next is the electron gun. Now this, at its simplest, is a metal filament which is heated to a very high temperature somewhere in the region of 2000 to 2500 degrees Celsius and this hot metal filament will then emit a stream of electrons which will be attracted to a positively charged plate. These electrons can be thought of as small bullets or billiard balls and they will be able to knock electrons off the sample molecules resulting in the formation of positively charged ions. Next is the acceleration plates. These are negatively charged metal plates which will attract the positively charged ions formed during the ionisation step. We should also mention that this mass spectrometer tube is pumped to a very high vacuum. This will ensure that the ions inside the mass spectrometer do not collide with any gas molecules present in the air. Moving along the mass spectrometer, the next component you will meet is a very powerful electromagnet. Now these electromagnets will produce a very strong magnetic field which will be used to deflect the positively charged metal ions onto the final part shown in the diagram which is the detector plate. The first step in getting the sample to be analysed is obviously to get it actually physically inside the mass spectrometer. Now the substance to be analysed must be in the gaseous state. So if the substance is a liquid or a solid, it is first heated to vaporise it. The equations shown on screen show how this vaporisation reaction happens. It is worth mentioning that modern mass spectrometers are capable of analysing very small samples somewhere in the region of one nanogram or even smaller samples can be analysed. The next step is the gaseous sample is ionised by an electron gun. Here an electrical current is passed through a metal fil filament causing it to heat up to about two and a half thousand degrees Celsius. The metal filament is usually made of a metal such as tungsten or rhenium. This hot metal filament will emit electrons which are then focused and directed towards the sample. You can think of these electrons as tiny bullets or billiard balls and they are able to knock out one or more of the electrons from the gaseous sample to form positively charged ions. Now as we have said, 
The fast moving electrons which come from the electron gun are able to knock electrons from the sample molecules to form positively charged ions. Most of the ions which are produced will have a plus one charge. So for example, the two equations shown represent the ionization of the alcohol molecule ethanol to form a molecule with a one plus charge. In the second equation, the electron shown in red is the electron from the electron gun. So depending on which type of book or textbook you're using, you may see one or perhaps both of these equations shown. You should also be aware that large, complex molecules are unlikely to survive this ionization step intact. The electrons from the electron gun are likely to smash most, if not all, of these large molecules into smaller fragments. However, by studying these small fragments, it is possible to build up a model of the original molecule. Much like building up a jigsaw using small pieces to end up with the overall picture. After the ionization step, the positively charged ions are now accelerated up the mass spectrometer by being attracted to a series of negatively charged plates. These negatively charged plates contain slits which will result in the formation of a narrow focus beam of ions being produced. The next stage in the mass spectrometer is perhaps the most crucial. The deflection stage of a mass spectrometer plays a crucial role in separating ions based on their mass to charge ratio. And here's how it works. The accelerated ions enter a region with a strong magnetic field. Now this magnetic field will exert a strong force on the moving charged particles, that is the ions. Now the force experienced by each ion depends on two factors, the mass of the ion. Now heavier ions have a greater inertia or mass and are harder to deflect than lighter ions. And the second factor is the charge on the ion. Ions with higher charge experience a stronger force from the magnet compared to those with lower charges and are deflected more. Now we can simply combine these two factors and say that the amount of deflection experienced by an ion depends on their mass to charge ratio. The final step in the mass spectrometer is the detection step. Now by varying the strength of the magnetic field Ions with a particular mass to charge ratio can be focused onto the detector plate. And when these ions strike the detector plate, it triggers the, it triggers the release of an electrical current, which is proportional to the number of arriving ions. This is then converted into an electrical signal by the installed electronics. Hi, thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful or would simply like more information, then why not visit the website that accompanies these videos? The links are in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you.